On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to remove scratches from your black interior trim. Plus, I'm going to introduce this new light from ScanGrip called the Line Light. You cannot work on interiors without this thing. That and a lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. Guards uh, all the way. Oh. Touch our paint on. I can hear it. Black interior trim is impossible to keep clean. Coffee spills, quick wipe ups, hockey sticks, kids, and the daily in and outs will cause the plastic to scratch just like your exterior paint. But refining these areas after compounding, that's the real challenge that we're gonna talk about today. Okay, the very first thing you need to do is obviously be able to see. And interiors, as we all know as detailers, is kind of a nightmare. I have lights all over the place. I have big lights up on the, the ceiling there, but they never really kind of cascade into the interior. Plus with um, t window uh, tint on there, it just kind of kills everything. So I put all the windows down and kind of help some light drain in here. But these are pretty cool. Um, I saw them at SEMA this year. You can pop them off. They're really sturdy and um, you know, they're, they're hardy, you can throw them on the ground. The way they work is there's a little switch right here. Twist it, goes off. Um, I guess there's two settings, one's super bright, one's kind of bright, so that's kind of neat. Um, it sort of looks like a lightsaber sort of thing. And in the back over here, there's a plug. Simply put it in, twist, plug it into the wall. I think it took like, I don't know, an hour or something. Um, and then they come with these little carriers. So once you turn it on, let's see. Yeah, we'll go with the super bright. Uh, you plug, you snap it into this little piece right here and you can slide it within the area. Now the way that this thing works is it's spring-loaded. So you, you pull it out, right, both doors are open, watch this will snap back. And so when I'm coming into a, a, a detail job or whatever, I can pull this up and it's rubber. This is all rubber, so it's not going to hurt anything. You grab that side, you know, try to get a good grip somewhere, right, and you pull it across. Once they are in place, they're actually pretty sturdy. You can wiggle them around and they're gonna stick pretty good. Plus, you can also manipulate the light, the direction, but just by moving this little uh, lever here and it kind of moves anywhere you want. Likewise, uh, on the box, they say that you can you know, do this underneath the hood and, and do some engine detailing. Typically, when I open the hood, I get enough light as it is, but if you're really going to town and going nuts on your engine, this can be helpful. The last thing that I do with this is I pop them off right here and I typically I can't do it because I'm sitting here, but I go pretend I'm in the back seat and I throw this on the floor. I literally just toss it in there and then I can see from the front looking back or the back looking in, you know, any, uh, you know, dirt or dust or whatever that's under the seat. Normally I take my little light and I sometimes, you know, I hold it in my mouth or whatever, don't do that. But uh, I can see what's going on underneath there and vacuum, uh, you know, strategically, if you will. So this tool is pretty cool. When I, at SEMA, I saw it, they were throwing it on the ground to show the sturdiness of it. So yeah, I can really speak to the sturdiness um, because you know you throw it in the back of your truck or your car or whatever, um, you don't want to break a light because this, um, this can be pretty helpful, uh, especially in dark interiors. With sufficient light in place, quickly clean out the area with compressed air, your interior brush, and fanatic picks to make sure the masking tape makes solid contact and sticks well. Next, tape off the surrounding interior plastics or leather to prevent the one inch pad from accidentally making contact and staining the plastic white. With the tape in place, I try to create a little barrier or a wall in case I get a bit of sling. Now, if you're asking yourself, do I need to mask off the entire interior? The answer is no, because we're not gonna be using a lot of product. We're doing fewer and slower passes and we're blowing out the pad before we touch the trim. However, if you feel more comfortable covering everything up, then go for it. Next, I use a mixture of 50-50 water to isopropyl alcohol to clean off the hand grease, sports drinks, coffee, etc. to avoid contaminating our very, very tiny tools. Yes, as you can imagine, residue control is even more important here with tiny surface areas and tiny pads than it is with larger pads and bigger areas and bigger machines, but more on this concept in a bit. Okay, now the interior trim is taped and we cleaned it off. You know, there's gonna be a ton of oil and, and coffee or whatever else that you get in your car and we don't wanna fight uh, residue control, which is a big issue with the paint. We're gonna have the same exact thing going on on the inside, but even more oils that we have to deal with. So clean that off. Now, I, uh, I went online, www.buffdaddy.com. Kevin, you guys all know him. He's completely insane. That's why we love him. And he shipped me priority mail. And in the box comes this kit. This kit is really designed for um, you know, working in tight areas, whether it's inside the car, outside. A lot of Ferraris have little vents and little things that, you know, you kind of get a special tool in there. Kevin makes those tools. So in the kit, there's a bunch of different, um, I ordered a couple of different things. So there are uh, longer extensions, 
right? So you need to get into something even tighter. Um, and these are all one inch. And they come with uh, the, the black foam, uh, the yellow polishing, and the red cutting pads amongst uh, various things. He's got backing plates, even this, a one inch microfiber cutting pad. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? And we're gonna use that today. Um, as well as two and three inch backing plates, et cetera, et cetera. So the two options are to use electric um, or the TA-50. I'm gonna use the TA-50 because I have compressed air and it's just more fun, but you can do exactly what I'm doing with the TA-50 with the iBread if you don't have a compressor. Last quick thing, um, how cool is Kevin? I don't know if you can see that, I'll pull the camera in afterwards, but that is a washer mod that uh, has been laser etched and it's got my face going on it with ammo. Um, and on the back it says, uh, Buff Daddy Original Washer Mod. So somewhere in Italy, someone is passing out. Nonetheless, this is very cool and uh, very thoughtful. So thank you, Kevin. Another trick you can use for interior polishing with small pads is to create a tiny makeshift pad washer if you don't have compressed air. Simply cut the bottom off an old water bottle, add a little bit of water, and leave it in your cup holder as you work. The first pad I used is a one inch microfiber cutting pad, an M105. This is basically a mow down and test spot combined. I just wanted to see how much work the pad product combo was doing. And as you can see from the haze, cutting is not the issue. Most of the scratches came out pretty easily, but I didn't want to go nuts on the super deep ones because the risk reward trade-off is simply not there for me on my daily driver. I think one of the lessons you learn with experience is when to say when or to keep your ego in check. So I was cool with 90% better in this case. The actual scary part is with the cutting being super easy to do, I knew I was going to have to pay for it on the back end or the refining stage of the process. So think of it this way, the softer the material, the easier it is to scratch the paint. It's also easier to cut those scratches out, but it's a nightmare to polish it because of the residue, which is very soft, is coming off at a high rate. It's filling up the pad, rescouring the paint, and turns into a vicious cycle. That's why polishing is so challenging with these small pads. To prove to you how soft and annoying this trim is, I accidentally grabbed my pad clean-out towel to wipe the trim off instead of my actual clean towel. Now, look at the fine white marks. I gently wiped and boom, love marks appeared. After multiple short sessions with red and black pads, here's a healthy 50-50 shot. But let's break down the actual steps in detail and discuss why this type of mini polishing and refinement is more difficult to achieve than it is with larger tools. All right, guys, I wanted to stop here and have a quick conversation because this 50-50 worked out really well, but I ran into a bit of an issue. I called Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown, is, as we all know, is completely insane and the best polisher in the world um, and explained the concept uh, to me that uh, I remembered, but I didn't really think about and uh, it makes sense now. So what happens is, in his example, is we have this five inch microfiber cutting pad. Now we've used this for years. We do about what, a two by two area? And if you do the math on it, Kevin does, uh, it's 23 square inches that we cover. Two by two area, that amount of residue can be held in this pad. Now, as you bump down to, you know, from a six to a five, to a four, to a three, to a, to a one, those ratios really get shrunk down. So this can only cover 0.7 or 0.8, I think he said, uh, square inches. So that's a tiny little bit of an area. And so when you're working on a tiny area, your brain goes, oh, I'm working with a tiny tool. I can, I can do a four by four area. But that ra those ratios don't make any sense. That's like using this and saying, hey, I'm going to do the entire hood before you blow it out. Like if we, you know, all the detailers watching go, oh yeah, you wouldn't do that, right? That's like using, you know, doing, you know, I don't even know, like a little, like the, as much as my fingers here without blowing this out. But you wouldn't think that because it's so small, but it's the ratio. And so I went like, oh my gosh, I remember him, you know, we, us talking about that years ago, doing some crazy Ferrari or whatever. I went like, oh my gosh, that's why I'm seeing, I couldn't get it refined down. So the moral of the story is you're, you're gonna have to lower down or do less um, passes, meaning you're, you're not gonna be able to do the whole thing with one because you're filling up more. So that means more cleaning out. That means slower passes to recognize and less material, meaning less 205 or 105. That abrasive material, whether it's polish or compound, is irrelevant at this point. It's cutting so fast and filling up the pad. If you lower the amount of polish or compound, then you lower the amount of abrasive. If you blow out the pad more, that means you're cleaning out the abrasive to get that refined. So you're doing multiple steps, more steps than you would on the paint. Does that make sense? This, this concept is so much bigger um, than just this video. It's the whole basis of detailing. This is just squeezed and condensed into one little tiny area. So it, all the 
the issues and all the, the, I think of it like math. It's like one math equation, the one formula that you use on 50 million things on top of that. You're like, man, if you understand this formula, you can understand all the math. This is like a compressed, beautiful formula for the rest of the paint. It's really incredible. So I'm going to go in, finish the rest of this, and uh, yeah, we'll talk in a little bit. Here is the step-by-step -step process again if you're taking notes. Step one, prime a one inch microfiber cutting pad with your favorite compound, then blow it out with compressed air. Next, work the trim in very small strokes for a few seconds. Afterwards, blow the matted fibers clean, reprime with your favorite compound, and re-blow them out again to minimize the abrasives. Then repeat the strokes on the new area until complete. Step two, prime a new one inch microfiber cutting pad with your favorite polish, then blow it out with compressed air. Next, work the trim in very small strokes for a few seconds. Afterwards, blow the matted fibers clean, reprime with your favorite polish, and re-blow them out once again to minimize the abrasives. Then, repeat the strokes on the new area until complete. Step three, prime a one inch red foam pad with your favorite polish, then blow it out with compressed air. Next, work the trim in very small strokes for a few seconds. Afterwards, blow the foam clean, reprime with your favorite polish, blow it out again to minimize the abrasives, then repeat until the area is complete. For step four, prime a one inch black foam pad with your favorite polish, then blow it out with compressed air. Next, work the trim in very small strokes, maybe even one stroke if necessary. Afterwards, blow the foam clean, reprime again with your polish, blow it out again to minimize the abrasives, repeat until the area is complete. After talking to Kevin and playing with the trim, uh, he's absolutely right. The pads are filling up really, really fast and I have to blow them out constantly. Now, the little interesting thing I wanna tell you is, uh, I only have one air hose and when I plug this in, I use it after, you know, I don't know, 15 seconds or so, it's full. I have to unplug this, put this in, blow it out, put, take this off, put it back in. So it's a little cumbersome. So it's like double the annoyance because we're running through the pad so fast. And because I'm doing this, it's kind of making my eyeballs bleed. So the plan now is I'm going to fill up. This is about as many as I would need um, based on the practice I've just been doing. So I'm going to fill these up, blow them out individually. Uh, same thing here with the, with the black. Then just go back in when I'm done, you know, just slap one on. And then when I'm done, put it to the side, put a new one on, slap, you know, that kind of thing. So I can just get through this and then clean the pads later. So just wanted to give you that little tidbit. Refining with tiny, tiny pads, uh, it's very, very uh, challenging, tedious, and time, con time consuming. So uh, know that going in and uh, you can sort of prepare ahead of time. Well guys, I'm finished up and it looks pretty good. Now the piano black, as you guys know, as soon as you wipe it, it puts little feather marks, little white marks in it. So I knew that going in. So when I polished it and compounded it, uh, I wanted to take out the big scratches that I've had for the last three years. And it looks spectacular. Even the rib here for the cup holder is just really bright because I, I caught it with the polisher. So it looks spectacular. I'm very happy and I'm being realistic. Now I want to give a, a, a few little points here. One. Filming this was kind of a nightmare because I, I just can't get a shot over here because um, of the ceiling here and how to get. So it was a little bit, I, I got as much as I possibly could and held the light, but just trust me, it looks, it looks really, really good. Now, number two, you can put a clear bra on it. I'm going to measure it out and see how it feels. Uh, and look, I just, I'm not crazy about putting a clear bra on the inside of my car for whatever reason. I put the clear bra on the outside on the swipe part of, uh, you know, this is electronic door lock, so I have to swipe and type a code in. So that makes sense to me, but putting something like clear bra on here, I don't know, but uh, if it works for you, you can put that in here. Now, let's just do a quick recap. When you decrease the size of your pad, uh, what happens is, is it becomes overwhelmed with residue much faster. That's pretty logical. So when you, do, when you shrink down, it becomes very difficult to refine. You can cut pretty quick and, you know, cut uh, you know, fast and dirty, as they say, that kind of thing, or mow down, like Kevin Brown says, just kind of plow it out. So I got the scratches out really fast. The refining was a bit of a nightmare. So you can, as you can see, I added way more steps. Usually I do two steps, let's call it, for a paint. This one I did three or four or five because I just had to basically get a little bit off the residue and then, uh, you know, blow, blow the pad out. Now, in this case, I didn't want to blow all of them out because it was kind of a nightmare. So I primed them all beforehand. Uh, as you saw, just to kind of speed things up. But you get the, the general idea. As you decrease the size, it fills up much faster and your refining just becomes a nightmare. So um, if you follow these steps and kind of take your time, slow down, and just go in these little miniature half steps and keep blowing out the pad, you'll have success. This thing looks uh, great 
and uh, I couldn't be happier. Now I have to do the, the door panel. So got a lot more work going on here. As always, guys, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, Larry at AmmoNYC.com or visit Kevin Brown at BuffDaddy.com. He's always around and uh, happy to answer the calls, that kind of thing. Thank you for watching and uh, happy polishing on your interior. Hey, I was just talking about you on camera. Yeah, you ruined my shot, Kevin Brown. <laughs> so what's up? Did you get that last text? No, why? Because the ratio, I, I figured it out while I was eating. It's huge. I said, I said that the five inch was 23 square inches and then the one inch was 0.7 or 0.8 square inches. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Let's see. I have to look at my chart. Only you would have a chart while you're eating breakfast. Well, Five inches, nineteen point six four square inches. A five inch. Okay, I said twenty three, but that's a fine. So nineteen or twenty three. That's how yeah. much that covers. Okay, and then the one inch is what? Uh, it was point seven eight. Point seven eight. Yeah. So what I did was I said, okay, let's say you got a one inch diameter pad and you do six times its length. You know, because you or me could swing our arm three feet. Right, we could do, hey, Larry, do a test. Do a Have test. you seen my arms? I can do eight feet at once. Right, so <laughs> for the average human being that, does, that wants to be ergonomically correct, right. three foot would not be unreasonable. No, so that's, that's back fair. back and forth three foot, okay? Right. So I said, okay, well, what? If, so let's say you had a six-inch pad, six-inch pad times six is 36 inches, that's three feet. So that's, a, you know, six times the pad length, right? Right. If you try to do the six times the pad length on a one inch, you're going to do a six inch pad, right? Mm -hmm. It's the surface area. It, it, it's it's the ratio of how much area are you working with that pad, you know? Like, oh, you, right. You follow what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. The ratio of the area that you're working versus the ratio of the area of your pad, that yeah. combination of the two. Right. That's why nobody can finish with little pads ever. Because right. they don't, you know, you have to step down. It's not reasonable to do the tiniest, oh, I moved it 1.5 inches. Okay, good. No, you can't do that. You're going to have to just do a normal path, but clean it off a lot, lot more and yeah. just refine it down, 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 and it'll work out. Right. I was it'll saying on camera that it was a challenge to refine, but then I did multiple steps. So hopefully that came across well, but That's yeah. That's right. It, this is a big problem. Most people never, you don't see people finishing down with little pads. It can't be done. And it's usually because they think it's like too much pressure or whatever. It's just in the ratio. It's just, it's just, that it doesn't seem sensible that it's that dramatic of a difference, but that's it. That's the black magic. It's not black magic. It's, it's in the numbers and there's the numbers. Wow. Well, okay. I, yeah, I appreciate it. It looks spectacular. Now, now I have to, uh, you know, plow my driveway with a spoon, so to speak. Now I got a lot more to go. <laughs> Did that black actually clean it up like we discussed? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. Perfect. It's as piano black. It's it's so it's so clean and nice that it's like the instant you wipe it or put your arm across it, it's scratching it. But that that's just what it is. I mean, I did that on day one as soon as I bought the car. You know what I mean? It's just it's piano black. What are you gonna do? Yeah. But it looks spectacular. I think I may actually put some reflex or skin on it or whatever. Or I'm even debating clear brawling it at this point. So. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right on, man. You're Talk the man. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. So there you go.